So here is another question on half wave rectifier. So it is given that an AC supply of 230 volts is applied to a half wave rectifier circuit through a transformer of turns ratio 5 is to 1. Assume the diode is an ideal one. The load resistance is 300 ohm. Find first the DC output voltage the peak inverse voltage PIV, maximum power delivered to the load and average power delivered to the load. This is the question. Now let us draw the circuit diagram first then we will try to understand how to uh, get the required parameters. So first we have an AC voltage 230 volt RMS value connected across a transformer. Five is to one. This two thirty volt AC. Then we have a diode ideal one with no forward resistance and then we have a load resistance RL which is equal to 300 ohm this now okay this is the primary winding this is the secondary winding if you remember I think we have solved another question of this kind but that was a different turn ratio but uh, and uh, it was a bit simple as compared to this but okay turns ratio number of turns of primary winding to number of turns of secondary winding is directly related with the voltage across the primary winding and the voltage across the secondary winding here this 230 volt which is the RMS value okay this is the RMS value of the primary winding voltage so we can say that this turns ratio 5 by 1 is equal to VP RMS by VS RMS okay RMS value of the primary winding RMS value of the secondary winding voltage which is equal to 230 by VS RMS that implies the RMS value of the secondary winding voltage is equal to 230 by 5 which is equal to 46 volt this is the RMS value of the secondary winding voltage. Now we know that VRMS is equal to Vm by root 2. Again pay attention here this is a half wave rectifier but what we are talking about here is the AC supply okay the AC supply here we are talking about the AC supply we are talking about here okay which is sinusoidal okay which is sinusoidal in nature so here we know for a sinusoidal wave RMS value is equal to maximum value divided by root 2 or the peak value divided by root 2. So the maximum value here of the secondary winding voltage will simply be equal to 46 into root 2 which is equal to it is coming around if we approximate it 46 into 2 it is coming around uh, rounding it off it is 65 volt that is the maximum value 
okay the maximum value across the secondary winding so we can say if we draw the effective diode circuit it will be something like this okay this is the effective diode circuit okay with rms value which is the 46 volt rms and maximum 65 volt this the secondary winding voltage this this is the diode this is rl is equal to 300 ohm okay now let us determine the maximum current that flows through this circuit maximum current will flow when the voltage which is the secondary winding voltage will be maximum that is the secondary winding voltage which is equal to how much 65 volt okay so i max here will be equal to vs max that is the maximum value of the secondary winding voltage divided by the total resistance which is equal to rl because rf is equal to 0 ohm it is an ideal diode that is equal to 65 by 300 65 volt by 300 ohm it is coming around 65 divided by 300 it is coming around 0 0.217 ampere okay this okay then we'll determine the dc value or the average value okay idc the average value or the dc value of the current which is equal to i max by pi is equal to 0 0.217 divided by pi that is equal to it is coming around 0 0.069 ampere 0 0.069 ampere now we know that the output DC voltage is equal to IDC into RL you remember the formula IDC into RL that is the output DC voltage IDC we are calculated here 0 0.069 ampere RL is equal to 300 ohm that is equal to it is coming around Twenty point seven volt. Twenty one seven volt. This was the thing that was asked. The DC output voltage, the first parameter, the output DC voltage. There is an alternative way to this also. Alternative way. Here in this circuit forward resistance is 0 ohm and it is only applicable for ideal diode circuits okay always remember this method here the maximum value of the secondary winding voltage here okay the maximum value of the secondary winding voltage is equal to 65 volt the same voltage appears across this diode circuit no drop here no drop across the diode you remember the average value or dc value is equal to v max by pi this here the dc value of the output for this diode circuit will be equal to the maximum value of the secondary winding voltage divided by pi only when the diode is ideal this method is applicable we remember or we calculated here 
Vs max, the secondary winding voltage is equal to 65 volt. So Vs max will be 65 volt divided by pi, it will be equal to 20.7 volt. So you can go this way or you can go this way, you will get the same result. But always remember, you can only take voltage when the diode is ideal because there is no voltage drop across the diode, no loss when the diode is ideal. Okay, so we have determined the first parameter, then the peak inverse voltage. So peak inverse voltage is basically the maximum reverse voltage that appears across the diode. So as, the, as I uh, draw the effective circuit here, the RMS value is 46, the maximum value is 65. So basically it is like this. Here it is plus 65 volt positive peak. Here it is minus 65 volt. That what that is what it means. So the maximum reverse voltage that appears across the diode is minus V secondary max. That is the PIV. Okay, 65 volt in the negative direction. So PIV is equal to 65 volt in the negative direction. This is the second bit always remember okay it is the reverse maximum value of reverse voltage appearing across the diode that is peak inverse voltage then maximum power delivered to the load okay maximum power delivered to the load resistance it is simply equal to i max whole square into rl we have determined I max, I think. I max, I max, yes, 0 0.217 ampere. So it will be equal to 0 0.217 whole square into RL, which is equal to how much? 300 ohm. 300 ohm. And that is equal to, it is coming around. 0.217 whole square into 300 it is 14.1 watts that and the average power delivered to the load the average RL that is equal to I average whole square into RL or average is the same as the DC, IDC, whole square into RL. We have determined that also, IDC, I think here, it is 0 0.069 ampere. So simply 0 0.069 whole square into 300, which is equal to the output DC voltage, then we determined the peak inverse voltage, the four parameters, okay, one, two, three, four. And we also discussed the alternative way, which is applicable only for ideal diodes, that is zero forward resistance, the alternative way of determining the output DC voltage, okay, this, okay.